Hey there, welcome to the Adas Trading Platform channel. In today's video, we're diving into the analysis of market structure. It's the starting point for understanding the current state of the market. As we analyze market structure, we can note that the price typically goes through two market phases. The first one is a flat. The second one is a trend. There is an opinion in various sources that the price is in the flat phase about 80% of the time, and in the trend phase, the remaining 20%. Looking at the microstructure, we can see that these figures are close to reality. The price is much more often in a flat state than in a trend. In other words, one-fifth of the time, the price is moving somewhere, and four-fifths of the time, the price is in a range. For example, each impulse consists of approximately five ticks. The price formed this chart in 300 seconds. If we execute 50 trades every 6 seconds, then statistically only 10 out of 50 will be profitable in the 5 tick impulse. And that's assuming you are catching the trend and not the counter trend. As you can see, our goal is to significantly increase the statistics of profitable trades in our favor. To achieve this, several things need to be done. Be able to identify the current trend to catch the impulse. Find the moment when the market transitions into a trending phase, which automatically reduces the number of trades. Identify the entry point at the right moment with an acceptable price that retains movement potential. A crucial task will be to identify the transition from a trend to a flat market. The first step toward profitability is the absence of constant losses leading to drawdowns. Once you stop trading in areas with a high probability of a flat market, you will automatically eliminate a significant number of trades that do not yield results. And you'll reduce commissions, which also significantly influences the trading balance. Let's move on to the analysis of each market phase, starting with the trend. The trend phase consists of two states. The first state is the impulse, which is always expected in the direction of the main trend. The second state is the correction, which typically develops longer than the impulse and has much less movement potential. If we consider purely technical analysis, the trend is determined by a formula created decades ago. Signs of an upward trend emerge when the previous high is below the new one, and the previous low is also below the new one or approximately equal to it. For a downward trend, the pattern is reversed. In the initial market analysis, this is the first thing to pay attention to if you want to understand the current market phase and subsequently determine its condition. Typical technical analysis elements such as channels, trend lines, and others are rarely formed during the impulsive movement of a real strong trend. The impulse is a period when the market accelerates, taking previously accumulated positions of one side into significant profit and causing the other side to trigger stop losses and liquidations. To catch the impulse, it is necessary to enter a trade before it begins or attempt to catch the breakout of an extreme point, which may not provide a favorable price and significantly reduce the movement potential. Unlike impulses, which result in rapid movements, corrections are much more challenging to navigate. We can roughly divide corrections into several different types. The first type is a quick correction characterized by a directional movement predominantly consisting of candles moving in the same direction. This correction also has acceleration and a volume spike before its completion. The volume indicator can help analyze each correction and identify distinctive features, such as a volume spike at the end of the correction. This is the easiest correction to identify in trade since it finishes swiftly with a clear signal at the end. However, it doesn't occur frequently. The second common type of correction is similar to the previous one, but it usually lasts longer, candle directions are mixed, and there is no volume spike at the end. A characteristic feature of such a correction is a steady decrease in volume as the correction progresses. The next type of correction occurs in the form of a local flat. There is no clear pattern in volumes, but visually, you can identify the flat and simply await its conclusion during a new impulse beyond its boundaries in the direction of the trend. The fourth type of correction is a bit of a hybrid. It takes the shape of a channel, typically delving deeper than the previous correction types. In this scenario, you might notice spikes at the ends, and there could be several of these spikes as the correction unfolds. It could also be referred to as a trap since enthusiasts of classical technical analysis might mistake such a channel for a new trend and willingly enter trades against the trend, which can favorably influence the continuation of the trend in a new impulse. This happens due to an influx of counter-trend trades and the placement of stop-loss orders beyond the extremes. Once corrections are over, impulses should continue. 
If there are all the signs of a correction, but the price doesn't progress in the continuation of the trend, it's the initial indicator of the trend's end and the formation of a new balance and a flat on a higher time frame. In simpler terms, if there's a correction, the impulse shouldn't take too long to make its presence known. Now, let's delve into the flat phase of the market, also known as consolidation or balance. From my own experience and the experiences of traders I've interacted with, I can conclude that one of the most common reasons for a series of losses is continuing to trade during a flat market after a trend. In such cases, there is a risk of losing everything that was earned during the preceding trend. Therefore, it's crucial to identify signs of a flat formation as early as possible and either stop trading or adjust the trading strategy. The logic is quite simple. First off, take a visual check to make sure the market hasn't shifted into a flat mode. You can easily spot it by keeping an eye on those boundaries that the price has struggled to break through multiple times. If there's no visual sign of a flat, the next step is to determine the direction of the current trend. Identify its latest impulse and correction phases. The impulse and correction will provide the first two extremes, high one and low two in the example. At this point, you can be positioned in the current trend and await a new upward impulse. The third step is to wait for high three, which will be roughly equal to high one. By roughly, it means just a few ticks below or above high one without a clear and strong breakout upwards. Often, the breakout can look like a small tail on the candle pointing upward. Following this, there should be a pullback of roughly 50% of the wave from low 2 to high 3. Once we've obtained high 3, we are very close to a flat, making it a good point to lock in part of the position. However, the upward trend may continue. In the fourth step, we obtain the point low 4, which can also be slightly above low 2, equal to it, or have a small tail below. After the price rebounds and returns to about 50% of the width, we confirm the formation of the flat. From this point onwards, it's necessary to stop trend trading, as it's likely to result in losses when using tight stop-loss orders. After confirming the formation of the flat, two strategies can be considered. The first one involves seeking rebounds from the boundaries of the flat in the direction of the trend that preceded the flat. This allows positioning oneself on the stronger side in case the flat acted as a pause before the continuation of the upward trend. The second strategy is to stay on the sidelines and wait for an exit from the flat to continue seeking entry points in the new trend. Let's move on to examples of structure analysis on charts. The analysis should start with the higher time frame, especially when using a combination of higher and lower time frames. Alternatively, Focus on the one that works best for you. In this example, let's consider a 4-hour time frame with a scale of 600 candles on the screen. For this time frame, 600 candles are sufficient to identify several recent trends and determine the current state of the market. In this example, we can see that there were two trends, the first one downward and the second one upward. Moreover, it is visually apparent that consolidation has formed at the end of the upward trend. This is evident from the fact that the price cannot break out upwards or downwards from the range formed at the top after point 3. For a more in-depth analysis of the price structure, we need to zoom in roughly three times. In my case, that's 158 candles. To illustrate, let's break down the moment of transition from the trend phase to the flat phase step by step. At the beginning of the trend, we had several highs, labeled as high 1, and the first three were broken upwards, which cancelled the search for consolidations in those areas. At point 1, the fourth high was formed. Following this, there was an extended downward correction concluding at point 2. Then, a new impulse began, expected to continue the upward trend. However, the price faced resistance, leading to a downward rebound from the resistance zone at point 1. At this moment, we confirmed that buyers were encountering difficulties and the continuation of the movement became challenging. Next, there was an attempt to break the level of point 2, but after the candle closed, a tail formed, resulting in a rebound in the formation of point 4, which confirmed the flat. From this point onward, we understand that a new position may form, either continuing the uptrend or reversing the market into a new downtrend. Short-term trades on rebounds can be considered on tests of zones 1-3 and 2-4. Since the last trend was upward, we can assume it may continue, making purchases from support zones 2-4 potentially promising in case of an upward breakout. Cells in this structure carry the highest level of risk. In the upcoming videos, we will complement the analysis with volume profiling, providing a lot of additional crucial information.
Now, let's delve into the second example, examining market structure. Scaling the chart to fit 600 candles, we identify the latest trends. We observe the recent downtrend from point 1 and the current uptrend from point 2. Visually, it's clear that a consolidation phase hasn't formed yet, which means we are still in a trending phase. Now, the task is to determine whether it's in an impulse or correction state. Zooming into 150 candles, we notice a prolonged consolidation phase preceding the current moment, leading to the continuation of the uptrend. We identify point 1 as the latest high of the impulse wave. Additionally, there's a minor downward correction concluding at point 2. At the current moment, a new upward impulse is unfolding on the chart. While there was an attempt to break resistance 1, it wasn't successful. However, a 50% downward rebound to point 2 hasn't occurred yet. Therefore, there is still a chance for buyers to overcome the resistance. If your trading strategy revolves around trend-based breakout patterns, now is the time to look for a buy entry point. For those trading corrections, you're either already in the market with a buy pattern at point 2 or patiently waiting for a new correction to identify an entry point. And that wraps up this video. You can practice on historical data, trying to find transitions from trends to consolidations. Try calculating how many signals would have turned out unprofitable after confirming the consolidation. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, download the Addis platform for free using the link in the description, and see you in the next videos.